Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the Fair Use Fair Dealings Guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Good morning, everybody. This is going to be kind of an odd video. We're just gonna to touch on a few subjects, and these are subjects, some of which have come up in the comments on previous videos. There is nothing short or sweet about this one. Let's dive right in. Let's go. So let's look at this first. When Megan flew to watch Serena Williams play, I showed you guys the following video. People were upset uh, saying that, you know, Megan is a friend and Serena's mom was rude to her. But what you may not know is that Serena asked Megan not to come to that particular tennis match. I think some of the responses, like from Desrez22, that Serena had asked her not to come. And I might add that every single match that Meghan Markle has ever attended of Serena Williams, Serena has lost. Grace, down there at the bottom, said that TMZ did a report where Serena's mother apparently told Serena to stay away from Megan. Now, I've searched for that report. I have been unable to find it, but I did find this. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's another blind item. We all know that these things are usually pretty spot on, and this blind item says that the permanent A-list athlete was out to dinner and someone asked her about the illiterate one. I believe we can assume that that's Meghan Markle. I think it's safe to assume that it's Serena Williams who is the A-list athlete and it appears it's Meghan Markle's number that she has blocked. Hmm. Here's what I think is going on. The Hollywood A-listers, the ones that Harry and Meghan wanted to rub shoulders with, are not happy with them at all and they're being snubbed. Apparently, they're arrogant. They act entitled. We already knew that. People there are sick of them constantly calling themselves victims. And so the celebrities are closing ranks and snubbing them. Let's not forget that the Obamas, who they had a really good warm relationship with, or Harry did, snubbed them from the Obamas' birthday party. Apparently, the Obamas were very sick of them smashing and crashing on the royal family and the queen. The Obamas love the queen. Look at David Foster and his wife. They were always buddy-buddy with Harry and Meghan, and now you hear nothing from them. It's like they have fallen off the face of the planet. Look at George and Amal Clooney, who admitted that they went to the wedding and they didn't even know the two of them, right? Then they got used for a private jet to Meghan's half-million-dollar baby shower. Then they got used for a private jet to take them to George and Amal's um, property in Italy. I think it didn't take them long to realize they were being used, and now you never hear anything about them anymore. Which segues into my next thing here. Um, just pointing out, they signed a Netflix deal, and they've produced nothing. And we're coming up on a year and a half since they signed the deal. They signed the Spotify deal and they've only come up with one podcast and you hear nothing about Spotify anymore. And that's because I believe that Spotify has canceled their deal. And finally, you have the book writing deal with Penguin Random House. But let's be honest, the only way this book is gonna sell is if Harry trashes his family Everybody knows it's going to be a whole book about how Diana was actually killed because it's a conspiracy theory, because the man she was dating wasn't white. We've already heard him. The man is delusional. I, for one, will not be buying this book. I think a lot of people won't be buying the book. FYI, as I stated in one of my previous videos, the reason I think Spotify has been canceled is because when they signed the deal, there was all this fanfare, and now you hear nothing. And that's the way they do it. They probably quietly severed with them, and there was no notification. There you go. Moving on to our next little tidbit for today. The next topic I'm going to talk about is Twitter. Now, let's not forget that Twitter is owned by Google. And let's not forget that this ethical banking group that they just joined with has a huge percentage with Google as well as Twitter and Facebook. And I think that's one of the reasons why they went with this group, because I think they feel that they're gonna try to control the internet that way since they failed every other single way that they've tried. Now, let's be honest, they banned Murky Meg a week 
after she got a blue tick, which meant that she had verified her account and verified her identity. And even though she has contacted uh, Twitter repeatedly, they have yet to respond to anything that she sent as far as appeals go. Then you've got Yankee Wally, who was taken down after targeted harassment by the Sussex squad, which is something that's supposed to be against Twitter rules. And for anybody that doesn't think that that is correct, here is the tweet that was put up by the Sussex squad saying, great job, squaddies. This comment was placed on my Twitter account as soon as I uploaded my last video, the one where the, the Harlem parent was speaking out saying I'm a big name and I could be the next one. First of all, I'm not a big name. Um, I have a third of the followers that Yankee Wally, Murky Meg, and Taz have, although I'm gonna take that as a compliment. What's at risk here is free speech. This is a big thing. We already know what happened with Piers. Piers, you know, stuck by his guns and he's bounded back great. Well, I found this on Twitter also, saying that on the Sussex Squad podcast, you have no free speech, that they are going to look at everything that you do. And if you read it, it says they will call you, find you, call your job, contact your families. They will harass you, which is exactly what they have done to Taz and Murky Meg. But I don't see Twitter removing them. Even the Sussex Squad member who posted this disgusting tweet about how he was shopping coffins for the queen, although he has been suspended, he will be back. He has not been removed from Twitter. Next up, let's touch on what happened at the school. We all saw the parent video where Megan told the kids she was a princess and the kids were instructed when to hug, when to scream, when to sit. And she sat and read the book, The Bench, to them. Remember this? You guys were very vocal talking about how they crossed boundaries of decency in New York. What about the legal thing? Were they legally taping? And Lucius pointed out that they basically exploited the children and extorted the parents' money. Those kids were, were told to bring those $5 in. So basically, Harry and Megan didn't donate the books. They sold the books, books that were not purchased. So I started looking into the legality of what they did. And here's what I found. To start with, New York is a one-party consent state. That means that I can make a phone call to you and I can tape you because only one individual has to be aware of it. And since I'm the one taping, I'm aware of it. But how does that go to schools and children? Turns out there are policies in place, which I found very interesting. In order to go into that school, they had to request to film or photograph at the school. They had to give a written summary of what it was supposed to be about. I, for one, would love to know what's on the form they turned into the school because they told people this was stuff for the Archibald website. I think it was for Netflix. I mean, we could catch them in a lie if we ever saw the form. Then they consult with the principal of the school. And from what I've read online, the principal is a sugar. So I'm sure the principal said absolutely. I also saw the following conditions. Now you can pause this if you want to read it, but essentially this is what it says. No students can be filmed without permission from the principal and the parents. And the filming has to benefit the school, i.e. donations, things that help the students. Therefore, Harry and Meghan donated the Rotten Tomatoes and they donated a washer dryer. Therefore, they fulfilled the requirements. And the parents would have had to sign a release form. Now, it may not have been specifically this kind of release form for consent to photography and videotape. But I do remember very well when my kids were in school, there would be 50 forms to sign. And one of them was consent for photography, etc. And the parents probably signed that at the beginning of the year, not realizing that this would be in some sort of show for Harry and Meghan. They probably thought it was just pictures for the school, et cetera, et cetera. They'd have to consult with an attorney if there's legal action. 
Now, as this subscriber pointed out, she's positive the parents signed a release form, but the parents were probably not informed how it would play out or what the kids were going to be used for. And I completely agree with that. I don't think that in signing that form, it gave them license to put their kids on Netflix. And finally, Don Gross pointed out that if he walked around the town pretending to be royal, giving speeches and proclaiming to be important, asking poor people for donations and busting in on important meetings, he'd be laughed right off the streets. Finally, to the follower, I should say ex-follower because she's been tossed off my channel, who said that I stole the video of the parent from Murky Meg and that I steal everything off of Twitter. First of all, you need to get a grip. Second of all, you'll notice the pictures that I post always have the name and person of the user on Twitter or IG where I get my stuff. So I do give credit where credit is due. You'll also notice that I didn't put the video in my video. Instead, I gave you guys a link so that the person who originally posted it and did it gets full credit. Thank you. Thirdly, there's only so many photos and videos that we can all use. So yes, we're all going to use the same footage. That doesn't mean I stole it. And lastly, if you think I'm a thief and I'm not giving credit, you don't like my work, you don't have to watch. All right, guys, let's move on to the last thing we're going to cover for today. And that topic is Megan's title and her telling the kids that she's a princess. Now, let's remember, the only reason she's called a duchess, that's just an honorary title, and she's called a duchess simply because Harry has the title of Duke. And on Archie's birth certificate, it said she was a princess of the UK. And she's called that basically because of the HRH that was given to her when she married Harry. So the question is, is she still a princess? I'm going to say technically no. Once again, you guys were quite vocal and um, letting me know that if they remove the Duke and Duchess titles, then she'll be known as Princess Henry. So I decided to look a little further into it. Now, as I did my research, I found articles that says that, no, Megan's not entitled to be called a princess and Kate or Catherine isn't either because neither one of them is from royal birth. The thing that got them was the HRH, which I'd like to remind you has been put into abeyance. They're not allowed to use them or she's not allowed to use hers. Then I found this video of Kate Middleton. Watch this. Are you a <laughs> While she's technically not a princess, Kate nodded her head yes because, hey, points for effort. So my understanding, and I could be wrong, I admit it, my understanding is she is not a princess because, number one, her HRH, which is what made her a princess, was put into abeyance. Number two, she was not born of royal blood. Any title she has is honorary because of who her husband is. She's not a princess. But ladies and gentlemen, let's just keep something in mind. She sat on Oprah's couch and said she didn't care about these titles. Her most important title was being a mom as she was complaining that her children are not yet prince and princess. Okay, I think we all know the truth here. One other thing before I get scolded and I'm told that's not Kate Middleton, that's Catherine. The reason I keep slipping up that way is because she's so relatable. She doesn't walk around going, I'm a duchess. I'm a princess. I'm the next queen consort. This is one of the most down to earth, relatable women. And I think that's why a lot of people just call her Kate because she comes off that way. You guys know what I mean? I just love her. And finally, I don't have a video of Finn. He's out today being bathed and having his nails clipped and being beautified. But I want you to know he's doing well. Everything in the house is fine. He's still trying with the cats. I'll keep you updated. Guys, that was a lot to cover. Don't you agree? Do you guys think that Serena Williams has cut off her friendship with Meghan Markle? And do you believe that the other A-listers now are snubbing them? What do you guys think about what's going on with Twitter? While Yankee Wally did have numerous offenses before she was removed, apparently Murky Meg did not. Do you think they're curbing free speech or do you think something else happened behind the scenes that we don't know about? What do you guys think about all the hoops they had to jump through and the things they had to do in order to go into that school? And I, for one, would I said it before, I'll say it again, I would love to see the paper that they turned in saying what this visit was for. They had to be honest. So if they said it was just for Archwell, then what they taped can't go in Netflix. 
I would love to see that form. And what do you think? Is Meghan Markle technically a princess or is she just saying she is one even though her HRH is now in abeyance and she wasn't born from royalty? For somebody who doesn't care about titles, that seems to be a big thing for her. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified of future uploads. Don't forget to leave those comments below. As you can see, I love them. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter, although I may be branching out like Murky and Wally did. We'll have to see about that. Don't forget you can email me. And even though I'm getting emails from people telling me not to say it, I'm going to say it. Don't forget about that coffee fund. That coffee fund is essentially just a tip jar. That's what it is. If you like my work and you want to buy me a coffee, that's what it's for. And as usual, you guys, have a great day.